How many of you have ever heard of the story of David and Goliath? Let me see. David and Goliath. Most people. All right. The question is, what does that story have to do with us today? All right. A lot of people want to know that. That was then. This was now. What is that story? What's the relevance? What's it got to do with us today? I'm going to go through the story of David and Goliath, but I'm going to bring out some things about the story that has to do with us today and how it can help us today tonight. Because how many of you in here right now want to see a victory? Who wants to see it? That's what I'm talking about right there. Men that want to see a victory. We're going to talk about how to see a victory just like David did against Goliath. But the first thing we have to understand is what the enemy did and what the enemy does and how to overcome the enemy. First thing he did, if you want to follow along, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 1, it says, The enemy, the Philistines, went up to the mountainside and set up camp. And they drew battle lines. That's exactly what the devil does to us. The devil's coming up to us and it's setting up camp and it's drawing battle lines to go war against us. And it says, even further, he rallied the troops and he sent the best of the best of the best, which was Goliath. Goliath was a giant. Depending on what scholar you read, some say he was 10 feet tall. Some even say he was up to 15 feet tall. Now just imagine going up to someone taller than that. And he was the best of the best of the best. And he came right up to the edge with full battle gear, taunting, cursing, saying, anybody, anybody can take me on. If anybody can beat me, we will become your slaves. But if I beat you, you're going to become our slaves. So that's what was at stake. That's the they sent Goliath the best. So what do you think the devil, Satan, does to us? He sends the best of the best of the best to go against us, to taunt us to cuss our God, to go against us and say, hey, if you're really all that, go against me. That's what Satan does. But let's go on. Goliath approached the camp and he taunted them twice a day in the morning and in the evening for 40 days. And you say, no, wait a minute. Why twice a day? Because it was the Jewish custom that twice a day they would go for prayer and worship. So think about this. This giant, this warrior, Goliath, would go up to them twice a day when they were trying to pray, when they were trying to worship, and he would taunt them and cuss them and say, come fight me. Isn't that what the devil does to us? The devil comes to us when we try to pray, when we try to worship and pull us away from all that. Do you, you see how it's the same for us today? But wait, there's more. Let's go on and see what it says. So, the devil tries to taunt us and get us away from our relationship with God. Now let's go back a little bit. David's father, Jesse, sent David to test to see how his brothers were doing. His brothers were in the army. David was a shepherd boy tending the sheep. Jesse said, hey, take this food, go see how your brothers are doing. So he did. When he got there, he came up and he said hey to his brothers, gave him the food, said hey to the friends in the army, and he saw Goliath. And he saw Goliath taunting and challenging and cursing the gods. And guess what the people in the army, in David's army did? They fled and ran away because they were scared. Because they were scared. I'm going to raise my hand on this one. How many of us have had an obstacle in our life 
that was so big and so great that we got scared and we ran away from it. I'm raising my hand because I'm done. That's what I'm saying. But David, when he saw his troops running away, he said to them, he said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that taunts the Lord God of hosts, that taunts the Lord God who created us, who has a covenant relationship with us? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What does that have to do with us today? If there's something in our life that we see that's too big, that's a giant, we need to say just like David, what is this problem? He says this uncircumcised Philistine. Let me take what that means. Circumcision was a sign of a covenant between God and his people. A covenant means they had a contract, an agreement, so that when God had a covenant or an agreement with Abraham, said, you'll be my people, this is the sign that I'm with you and you're with me. All right, let's go back. David said, who is this uncircumcised person? What he's saying is, this giant has no relationship with the God that is for us. This giant has no relationship with the God Almighty. Why are you listening to him? When this got around, his brothers and the army soldiers tried to get rid of him. They said, go away. You're bothering me. Go away. Go away. How many times when we face our own giants do we have our own brothers trying to get rid of us and trying to shoot us away? Just like happened to David here. But news got back to King Saul. And when news got back to King Saul, he called David in. And he said, hey, is this true? And David said, yes, my king, it is true. That's what I told him. He said, do not let your heart fail. Do not let your heart fail. How was David able to say this? David remembered his victories. Remember I asked you, how many of you want to see a victory? David was remembering his victories. What victories did he have? When he was tending his sheep, a lion came and tried to grab one of the sheep. And the Lord helped him defeat a lion. We're talking a kid. He saved him from a bear. A bear tried to get one of the sheep, and he saved him from a bear. So, David was remembering these victories that he had over a lion, over a bear, and he told the king, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he taunts our God? God gave me victory over a lion. God gave me victory over a bear. He can surely give me a victory over this giant. And Saul said, you know what? You're right. Here's my armor. Here's my helmet. Here's my breastplate. Here's my shield. David tried it and he said, no, it doesn't fit me. This doesn't fit me. He took what God gave him, which was a staff and a sling. What does that mean for us today? It means when you're facing your giant, you use what God gave you. You can't use what God gave him. You can't use what God gave him. You use what God gave you. That's what you use. Because that's what he had the victories with the lion and the bear. Don't let your heart fail. He tried to give him his armor, but it didn't fit. Use what God gives you. Here's a part that I want to share with you that a lot of people overlook, but this is a very big part. David went down into the valley, and he went to the creek, and he picked up how many stones? Anybody know how many stones he got? Five. He got five stones. I have here in my pocket, for just a second. I have here in my pocket a stone. This stone, I picked myself at the 
the same creek that David got his stones in Israel. I was in Israel in 2019, and I got this from the same creek he did. And I keep this in my pocket, knowing that it's for giants in my life that I need to overcome. So let's go back to the story. He chose five stones. How many giants were there? There's only one giant. Why did he choose five stones? That's a good question, isn't it? There's only one giant. And he chose five stones. Why? Oh, somebody said somebody's been reading my notes over here. <laughs> exactly. For us, he chose four other stones, four additional stones for the rest of the family that were also giants. Whoa, wait a minute. So when we see a giant in our life, not only are we going to go after that giant, but we're going to take a look and say, you know what, I'm going after the other four right behind it as well. Talk about victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? David was not only facing a giant, but he said, you know what, I'm getting four stones for the rest of the family. Not only am I going to take you on and defeat you, but I'm going after the rest of the family. How many of you have ever heard that before? How many of you have never heard that before? Oh, let's see. That's why we're here to learn stuff. And not only do we learn this, this is an application that I can put into my life that when something presents itself, that not only am I going to look at it, I'm going to say, you know what, not only you're going down, but the rest of you are going down as well. Then it says, Goliath came down into the valley. David came into the valley with his five stones. And Goliath said to him, and he looked at him, and he said, Who am I, a dog, that you should come to me with sticks? He says, I'm not only am I going to kill you, but I'm going to make sure that the birds and the animals eat your flesh and all kinds of nasty stuff. And David did not say, I'm going to kill you. No, 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 no. David said, the Lord God of the armies, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord God of Israel is going to hand you into my hand. Because he knew who was with him. It wasn't him doing it. It was the Lord that was helping him. The Lord that helped him with the lion. The Lord that helped him with the bear. Is now going to help him with this giant. Then it says in verse 48. David ran at the giant. Not only did he take him on, but he ran to him. And while he was running, he was working his sling and slung the rock, hit the giant in the forehead, and the giant fell, it says, face first. And a lot of us keep reading there, but there is something important here to that term, face first. In those days, when you wanted to display to everyone that you're the absolute winner, you put your enemy face down. Then you would put your foot over the back of their neck to show complete conquer. You have conquered them, you put them face down, that means complete victory. So what this is saying is, when David slew the giant, killed the giant, hit him in the head, God made it so that this giant went down face first, showing complete victory. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. David went over to the giant, and he took the giant's sword, and he cut his head off. And that's not to be gross or something bad. What he's saying, remember back in what I told you, Goliath was the best of the best of the best. When you're the best, you're the ultimate authority. You're the ultimate power. Everybody does what you 
say, when he cut his head off, he removed the authority. He removed the power. And by doing that, he was saying, this giant can never have power over us ever again. This is what we need to do to the giants that are facing us. Not only slay it, make it go face down for total victory, and remove the power it has over us, remove the authority it has over us, so it never can do it to us again. One rock. One throw. This he did because, this is the most important thing, he says, today, you, God is going to hand you over to us so that this land will know who God is. We have a giant in our life. The Lord will give us the power. The Lord will give us the strength to not only slay this problem, this giant in our life, put it face down to where it's total victory, remove the power, remove the authority so that whoever sees it is a testimony that God is the one who gave the victory. So now my question, my question is this. How many of us are facing a giant? How many of us are facing a giant that we see is way too big, way too powerful, has a full battle gear on, and we look at it, and we say no, and we walk and run away in fear, just like David's brothers did, just like the armies did. But I'm here to say, let's look at David. What did David do? David knew where his help came from. David knew he had victories from God. David knew that this was an uncircumcised Philistine, which means this does not have a covenant relationship with God. Whatever problem the devil is putting in front of us does not have a relationship with God. If it does not have a relationship with God, God can strike it down, put it face down in victory, and remove the power and the authority that it has ruling over us in our lives. You can understand what I'm saying. So what is this power? What is this giant in our life? This giant can be a bunch of things. This giant can be our past. It can be our past. We have a past of abuse. We have a past of dysfunctional relationships. We have a past of exes. We have a past of a bunch of things. And that past looks like a giant that nothing can defeat. We have a giant of addiction. We have a giant of pride. We have a giant of put anything in you want. Anger, drunkenness, envy, whatever that giant is, a lot of times we just look at it and say, that's way too big. That's way too big. Even the king, Saul, didn't want to face the giant. Nobody wanted to face the giant. That's when you have to pray to God and say, look, I remember when you gave me this victory. I remember when you were with me. I remember. And this time, whatever this giant is in front of me, I'm going to say, God, this victory is coming because of you. This victory is going to come face down, complete victory, no more authority, no more power, it's over, it's done. Now, I have some brothers with me, they're going to come up here and just right now. While they're coming up here, I have a question for you. This is why we are here right now. They're coming up here. If you have
have a giant or more that you're facing that you think is too big, too great, too powerful, we're here right now to pray with you, to encourage you, to uplift you, to be with you because there's strength in numbers. Yes. The addiction is a giant that can be defeated. It can be defeated. But you've got to run at it like David did. You've got to call it out because he said, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord God of the armies will hand you over to me this day. And that's what happened. If you want that now, come on up right now. Come on up right now. We're here right here to pray with you. We're here to, there we go. If you want victory, I ask you to be very beginning. Who wants a victory? And I saw hands go up. You want a victory? Come on and claim it right now. Claim it with us right now. That's right. That's right. And give these people a hand for having the faith and the courage to come up here and claim a victory. If you want a victory, it's here tonight. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised another breath. But we are promised a victory if you want it. We are promised that if whatever we do in the name of the Lord, in the name of God, let Him work it out. Let Him come and be your strength. Just like David. David was a little shepherd boy. All the brothers said, you know what? You can't do this. None of the soldiers went against Goliath. Not even the king went against the giant Goliath. Only the one who was willing to claim victory. If you're willing to claim victory, we're here right now. You want to be like David? Come claim victory. Anybody else? I saw some hands that you want to claim victory. You want to be like David. You think it's a giant? It's not too big. There's nothing too big for the one who created everything. There's nothing too big that he can't handle. Now, how many of you are going to take this story, take David and Goliath, Share it with your friends. Be a witness. Be a testimony. Saying that, hey, nothing is too big. I don't care if it's the best of the best of the best demon that Satan is trying to put in your way to rob you of your praise, to rob you of your worship, to rob you of your prayer time. It's not too big. All it took was one rock. All it took was one rock to take the giant down. One little rock to take down a big giant, but you got to use what God gave you. Use what God gave you to take down the giant. Anybody else want to claim their victory tonight? Anybody else want to claim their victory tonight? Alright? While they're doing this, if you want, you can join me. I'm just going to break down the song, why not? Uh, 